Hello. In this video, we're going to discuss how we can do our first flight to the Statue of Liberty. We have provided and is available on our website what is called our first flight to the Statue of Liberty. And in the fact sheet, we have given you some basic facts that are that the aircraft is going to fly at 100 knots, that we burn seven gallons an hour, and that a gallon of, air, of fuel weighs six pounds. By using the sectional chart that we have provided, we ask the students to find LaGuardia Airport and to find the Statue of Liberty. And you'll see in the document that we've supplied, we have provided details on the controls and the control assignments. And we can set up a basic math equation. Once we measure the distance between LaGuardia and uh, the Statue of Liberty, we can come down to the scale on the bottom of the chart. And by measuring that line, we will find that this distance from LaGuardia to the Statue of Liberty is 10 nautical miles. So we set up the equation 100 knots over 10, or 10 percent, and that's the time it's going to take us to get from LaGuardia to the Statue of Liberty. So we take 100 knots divided by 10, and that's 10 percent, times 60 minutes, and that's going to give us an answer of 6 minutes, and in 6 minutes we will fly from LaGuardia to the Statue of Liberty. The next thing we need to do is to figure out our um, um, heading. And so if we take this line and move it down to the compass rows, you'll see that it lines up with approximately 240 degrees. And so we can set up a flight plan for ourselves that we're going to take off from LaGuardia on runway 4, heading of 40 degrees. We're going to turn to the left until 240 degrees presents itself in the front of the uh, directional gyro. And we're going to climb out at no greater than 20 degrees nose up to an altitude of 2,000 feet, and in six minutes we will arrive at the Statue of Liberty. And so we're going to fly that now, and as we are flying, I'm going to describe some of the other uh, features on the simulator. So we're going to go to full power. We're going to wait until we have 60 knots on our airspeed indicator. We're going to give it a little bit of right rudder so that we maintain the center line. And as we accelerate, we are inducing lift. And at 60 knots, we've induced sufficient lift for us to take off. You can press the outside view of the plane, and you can get a look at what's going on. You can always move around that view, as you may desire. And what I'm going to do now is put the plane into a uh, 15 degrees nose up angle of attack and I'm going to rotate the plane until we get to 240 degrees on our directional gyro and we're rolling around now uh, we're just about, about to pass west and when we come to 24 I'm going now to straighten the plane out level the plane out and uh, I'm going to aim the plane and pick a visual mark. And so you'll see here the City Corp building, and that's a, that's a pretty good mark for aiming our uh, departure. Uh, we're not going to violate 20 degrees of nose up angle of attack. And you'll note that on the altimeter, we are just crossing 1,000 feet. We're on about 240 degrees, give or take a few degrees. And we're flying right now at about 85 knots at 15 degrees nose up angle of attack and that's giving us a rate of ascent of approximately 800 feet per minute and I'm just going to allow the plane to uh, continue to climb and of course we can always take a look at our position uh, it's a lovely view of New York City here's the Statue of Liberty in Newark Airport and our target is right over here between these two buildings and as we approach this you will uh, begin to see the uh, Statue of Liberty come into view. Wh while we're talking I wanted to just go over a couple of the other 
uh, controls as we're flying on our flight plan. We have the camera view button, which uh, you can locate based on the controls that your uh, simulator is set up with. We have uh, a vertical switch that's going to allow us to uh, add flaps if we want to use flaps on departure or on landing. We can control our angle of attack by moving the trim switch, which in this case is on the left side of the yoke. And the trim switch is making small adjustments to a small tab on the back of the elevator. And that tab, called the trim tab, which is right here, uh, allows us to change the angle of nose up angle of attack based on our desired position. And when we are, uh, have climbed to the altitude we want to level off with, we use the trim wheel or the tr electric trim to control the nose angle of the plane. So I can push the nose down or I can push the nose up by using the trim. Now you'll notice that we ha are about to arrive at the Statue of Liberty. And I like to ask the uh, students who would like to land in front of the Statue of Liberty. And it's pretty reliable that everybody wants to land in front of the Statue of Liberty. And so now what I'm gonna do is show you how we can change aircraft. We push the Alt key on the keyboard and that's bringing up our menu. We come up to vehicle and we're gonna click on that and go to select vehicle. Once we've selected the vehicle, I'm gonna scroll down using the down arrow to a plane called the de Havilland Beaver, which is a seaplane, and I'm gonna click OK. And now we've changed aircraft from uh, the Cessna 172 to a de Havilland Beaver. Uh, this is a wonderful, powerful airplane. Harrison Ford flies one of these. Uh, we're at about 2,600 feet at the moment, and since we want to land in the Statue of Liberty, I'm gonna pull the power all the way off. Now, when we reduce thrust, we're going to start to descend uh, down because we're no longer generating lift. And what we're going to do is descend down to approximately 100 feet over the water. So we're just gonna gently point the nose of the plane down. And we're gonna position the plane so that we land at the end of the Hudson River into New York Harbor, right in here. The descent should be gradual. Uh, as we descend, gravity is pulling us down, and therefore our airspeed indicator is going to go up. One of the things that is important to remember is that an airplane will continue to want to fly unless we put the airspeed down below stall speed. And the way that we do that is that we come down to approximately 100 feet and we do what's called flaring. Flaring is when we put the um, eyebrow of the cockpit, that's what this is called, the eyebrow, level with the horizon. And what that does is it allows us to fight gravity and by fighting gravity we will reduce airspeed until about 80 knots on this aircraft, and at 80 knots, we will no longer be generating sufficient lift to um, make the plane want to come out of the water. And so we're approaching here uh, 250 feet, 200 feet. So we want to watch our altimeter, and now I'm at 100 feet, and I'm going to pull back on the yoke, and I'm gonna line up the, the top of the cowling, the eyebrow, with the horizon. And as I do that, you'll notice that the airspeed is dropping. And once the airspeed drops below stall speed, we will settle into the water. And no matter what I do with the controls, I can't make the plane come out of the water. And so here we've completed our first flight to the Statue of Liberty. Uh, we've got Lady Liberty right in front of us and it's a beautiful thing. So I hope that this was informative and helps you understand how we can initiate our first flight. As always, please feel comfortable to call our office, 203-527-5747, and we will be happy to answer any questions. Thank you.